Welcome to the Peak Mental Performance Podcast with Joe Shalero, optimizing your mental health and athletic performance one episode at a time. Two, one. All right, welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Peak Mental Performance. I have with me today Vince Luciani, who is in charge of the Legacy Coaching. Uh, he has his master's in coaching education from Ohio University, where I work, and his coach football at the high school, college, and professional levels. He decided, based on those experiences, to start focusing more on a holistic approach to coaching athletes and kind of going outside of just what they do on the field, and that's what we're going to talk about today. I think it's a, a really great thing he's doing, a really great topic, and uh, it's also a good way to switch some gears from, I know we've been very focused on some of the medical neurological stuff lately so this is a good chance to talk about some of the art of coaching athletes and things um that are going to help them their entire life so thank you for being here today vince man thanks for having me i'm excited absolutely so a couple quick updates um for those of you that have been on the peakmentalperformance.org website we've been adding a lot of things adding a lot of things um, starting to add slowly some research review stuff um as a follow-up to our last episode with sleep researcher Jesse Cook, uh, I have a sleep article coming out on Elite FTS in a few weeks on altering your circadian rhythm for improved performance and sleep quality. And some of the things that I've put in there have been helping me dramatically. I mean, I struggled with insomnia for 10 years, and some of the really simple things that I've been doing that I put in that article for helping fix your sleep wake cycle has been uh it's been helping me a lot, so hopefully that'll help everyone as well. That'll be up in a few weeks, and I'll make sure to post the link to that. Um, the other thing that we have that is new is uh, many of you have heard me talk about Kratom in the past as um, a really, uh, really beneficial tool for a lot of people for a lot of reasons, whether it's pain management or anxiety or things like that. Um, we went ahead and set up a partnership with a comp one of the top companies for selling support the companies for selling them um, so if you choose to purchase it uh, ten percent of your first order will go help to support the podcast so if you kind of kill two birds with one stone you can uh, purchase kratom if you think it'll be helpful for you and then part of your uh, part of your purchase will go to support us too so um, if you'd like more information about kratom uh, you can go to peakmentalperformance.org slash Kratom, K-R-A-T-O-M. And I have a bunch of articles and research on there. Um, I try to be pretty uh, pretty honest and transparent about what I think works and doesn't work for people and make sure you have all the information without just pushing something. So uh, go read through that there. But um, I found it as a very low-risk, very effective alternative to some of the medications I've been on in the past, and uh, it's been very helpful for me. And lastly... Um, for those of you that may be interested in online coaching for powerlifting or strength training or just general fitness and wellness, we're continuing to build up what we're build up what we're doing um, through here as well. I'm continuing to add more educational materials into some of the coaching packets and more stress analysis and sleep analysis stuff and ways to get feedback. Um, so if you're interested in that, I encourage you to check that out on the peakmentalperformance.org website as well. So those are all the updates for today, and we will go ahead and jump into our discussion with Vince. So yes, Vince, what is the legacy coaching, and kind of why did you decide to start that based on your experiences? Okay, so the, uh, the legacy coaching is a program that I created um, to coach athletes and guide them to basically answer life's big, big questions. And really simplify things for them, and and better understand themselves as people, so that they could perform better, you know, on the field and off the field. Um, and it's it's funny because I'm still kind of you know I'm I'm about eight months or nine months in going full time months in going full time with it, so I'm still kind of learning like how to completely capture it. But really, it's just giving athletes the time to think about themselves. And the reason there was one moment that I'll never forget that that caused me or at least put me on the path of creating this. And after I finished coaching, I had a really bad knee injury. It, it brought me home, um, back to Canada, and I got hired at Lululemon. Okay, so I'm limping in there. I apply for a job. They hire me. And then my manager sits me down, and she says, who are you? And I said, I'm a football coach. And she said, no, Vince, who are you? I said, I'm a football coach. She said, Vince, that's what you do. 
And in that moment, I broke down in tears because like it, there was there was a, there was a split. It was like I was so thankful that she asked me because no one has ever asked me that before. And then there was a piece of like I can't believe I let my my sport define me my entire life. And so now I've set myself on a path of allowing athletes to define themselves and their lives before their sport does. Just risk and or before anyone else does or before anything they do. Um, but it's just really, you know, that that opened up, you know, that the other aspect of it is the power of a question. She didn't tell me who I was, but all she asked me was, Who are you? And then all of a sudden she put the mirror up in front of me and I'm like, I gotta start thinking about this. And so for the next two to three years working with the company, I, you know, I jumped into, you know, like read some books, went to some uh, self-development courses, workshops, leadership retreats, and just kind of, you know, understood the whole, the whole work of, you know, self-development. And I was like, I kept every time, every time I learned a new lesson, I was like, why did I never learn this as an athlete? Like it would have been so much more powerful. Like I think of like vulnerability for men. It's like, for me to express myself in front of all these people I don't know, imagine how powerful that could be on a, on a football team. And so I just, I just kind of went through this process, and um, there was a moment where, you know, where, you know, I was really, I thought I was good, like I didn't know I was gonna, gonna create this. So I thought I was gonna uh, work my way up with Lululemon, and there was one day where I applied for a job. They called me. They said you're not gonna be getting an interview, and I, was, I took it really personally. And I remember uh, I went to the cemetery to visit my grandparents. They were always like my my sounding board. So I just kind of like, you know, like to just be there with them. And I just said, guys, give me a sign, you know, just give me something. And the next day I got a phone call from my mom's friend and he said, we're looking for um, a young football coach to take a an under 16 boys flag football team to the national tournament. Um, and they were, in, they were asking if I was interested. I was like, absolutely. Like, I love, you know, I love coaching kids. I love football and absolutely. And on that trip, one of the parents, she was like, wow, my son really looks up to you. Like, would you be, would you be interested in mentoring him? Like, I would love to pay you to mentor him. I'm like, sure. Like, absolutely. Like what, what kind of things do you think he, you know, he needs help with, he needs help with. And she started telling me some things and I was like, instead of going on Google and seeing like what I could do to help him out, I was like, no, what do I think? based on what I've learned through my experiences, like what do I believe he would, you know, he would need. Right. And so I sat down with him the first time we talked about, uh, emotional tri- like triggers in a game. Cause he got, you know, he let his emotions get the best of him after like a bad call or, you know, like a drop ball or whatever. And we really broke down all the triggers and like all the things that came up and his heart racing and his, you know, his blood's pumping and he's frustrated and he's angry. And, and we, we dissected each feeling. And just the awareness of it, he was he he gained an understanding. But then I was like, okay, now now that you understand where it all comes from, what can we replace it with? And so I just I just started literally testing things out, and like with no intention of testing, it was just like I literally was like, I just want to help this kid. Right. And so so it got to a point where I was like, okay, cool. Like I you know I worked with him, whatever. And then my buddy my buddy who um you know he's a business coach. He's like Vince, I think you have something here. And I was like, no, man, I'm just like, you know, it's just something I do on the side and, and whatnot. And then he's like, no, like, let's, let's see where this can go. Like, and, we, and he helped me, he really helped me. He helped me set some goals and, and whatnot. And then once I created, I realized I was creating my own programming. I was like, okay, I'm connected with pro athletes. Let me test it out on them, give it to them for free, get some feedback and see where it goes. And I started uh, direct messaging NFL guys, CFL guys. Um, and then texting the guys that I knew and sure enough, I got, I think I had an Olympian, uh, two CFL guys, no, it was three CFL guys. And I took them through, uh, the majority of my program, got feedback in the moment. Like after the session, I'd be like, what'd you think? What do you you know? What could we change here? And it got to the point where I created an eight week program. Now it's evolved into a 12 week program. Um, and then it, it just kind of like, honestly, I wish I could tell you I had, (laughs) I had this all planned. But I didn't. Like, I just kept, I was like, wow, like, athletes need to talk about self love. Let's talk about self love. Let's create an activity where we can help them love themselves. Like, they want to get vulnerable and talk about their fears. How can you understand your fears? And, like, I just got really excited and it just became this thing and it, it started pulling me away from my work at Lululemon. And I remember going up to my manager, I'm like, I think it's time. Like, I think I'm just going to, I've got to leave. And I did. And, you know, I'm so glad that I did. Lululemon really helped me a lot um, launch me, but. 
Um, and here I am, like, I'm like, you know, I'm just kind of working with, yeah, a lot of high school, like I've worked with kids as young as eight and then up to pro, up to pro athletes and, and, and beyond. So yeah, it's, it's crazy. And now yeah. I'm on a podcast. Yeah. That's <laughs> awesome, man. It's, it's such a cool story. And, you know, I, I think it goes to show sometimes when I think people end up creating very genuine, very, uh, just very solid stuff that can help people when you're not just like going out there trying to create something because you just want to be in charge of something, but like there was a need there. And then the more you saw the need, the more you kept developing it. And I think that's where some of the coolest things start is like, you know, just you have one kid that your mom wants you to help them because they need something. And you start seeing, Hey, like more people have this issue. I mean, that was, that was kind of how I started this the mental stuff I'm working with is like I've been competing in powerlifting for a long time and doing stuff with different athletes and strength and conditioning. And it's like, I talked to one person who is like, man, that sounds very similar to my own experience. And then start talking to more people. I'm like, man, all these people sound the same, Yeah. but then, but then they all think they're alone. (laughs) And so it's like trying to find ways to connect them to those things. And uh, I think one of the points you made, which is, I think, it, when people can understand it, it really helps them is that it, it's not just about like trying to help people with things to like just help them when they're at home or whatever. It's like a lot of times, and I'm sure you've seen this, that their performance improves as they learn how to cope better emotionally with different things. Yes. Yeah, it's, and and, the, and the, I think the big key there is self-awareness. Like it's just being aware of it. Like when I eat pizza, I feel crappy. You know, it's like, but so many people go through their day where they don't even think about the things that they, they do, right? And so it's just kind of giving them that space to think about those emotions. Like, where do those emotions come from? Like, why did that make you feel angry? You know, like, going deeper. Sorry, I cut you off. but No, no, you're fine. It's absolutely, I completely agree. And I think there's a big, there's a big, I think there's something to be said for instead of, I think there's still so much stigma around not just, like, the mental side of things, but just emotionally and athletes and everything is everyone's like essentially doesn't want to, you know, quote unquote, talk about their feelings. But it's like, I think programs like yours are cool because it's, it's not just saying like, Hey, let's just sit around and talk. It's like, no, this is a structured program that like, let's take a look at how you feel about different things, how that feeds into your athletic career, how it feeds into outside your athletic career. And then let's, let's create a concrete way to improve that. And I think, you know, I always am trying to encourage athletes to look at this side of things the same way they look at the rest of their training. Um, You know, one of the things that uh, one of the the sports psychologists from OSU that I had on uh, for our first episode, him and I talked about was you ask any athlete what percentage of their sport is mental and they'll probably tell you and they'll probably tell you somewhere like 90, 95, 97, 100 percent. And then you ask them, what percent do you time do you spend on that? And they'll be like. 5%, 1%, 0%. Five percent, one percent, zero percent. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, it's it's funny, but it, I mean, it's so true. And I think it's very easy for athletes to just kind of pass it off to be like, yeah, that just sounds silly. But it's like, no, there's to your point. I mean, there's a lot of high level athletes that they found the benefit of this. So I think it's I think it's really cool what you're doing with that. Absolutely, thank you. There, there. The big thing um, that I was gonna I was gonna say off of that too was it's it's like. How, how do I explain this? Um, okay, so I went I went through a deep depression when I was playing. Okay, so it was like I had, um, you know, I had all these feelings, but I'd never expressed them because I wasn't going to tell my coach, I wasn't going to tell my parents, you know. I was, and then you know, I got diagnosed with ADHD. I had anxiety. I had all this stuff, but like, but like, no one could encompass all of it. It was just like, okay, my coach needs to know that I can't perform on the field. My parents need to know that something's going to happen in school. My, you know, the psychologist or whoever it was needs to know like how I'm feeling, whatever. But it what there wasn't someone to incorporate all of it. And so it's like the thing I've learned through this program is all of the underlying values across our life are all the same, but they all look different. So it's yeah. like in football, like if you're, you know, if you, um, I'm trying to think of a good example here. But if you, you know, if you love the community of football, the camaraderie, the competition, setting goals, being, being with the team, it's like, you can still get that after football. It just looks different. Right. And so it's like, I I always, it's so, it's so funny when we, um, 
when we box up like, okay, sports are here, family is here, student life is here, community right. is here, but really like everything, like all thing, like all the trends around all of those, like that's, that stays the same, you know, like those core values. But it's so funny because like people don't, like you said, people don't take the time to think about it. And I think that's the beautiful part is like, like we were saying is like, you're not alone. Like people get caught up in each of these boxes, but if you take a step back, you realize, whoa, okay, this is what I like about football. This is what I like about school. This, you know, and and really simplify, like narrowing it down. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, you know that's something we just keep trying to, you know, and I keep trying to push through these things is like helping people understand like everything's connected. I mean, if you can you can think in your head like that your athletic career or your training or whatever is, is in one little box down the street. And then your emotional health is down in a box down the other side of the street, but that's just not the way it works. It's not the way it works from a physiological standpoint. And it's not from even a just practically anecdotal standpoint from what coaches, from what coaches see. I mean, more and more, I think people are coming around to that idea. Um, so like, what are the, some of the, you know, you mentioned uh, a few of the, kids you've worked with that were maybe struggling with some things, um, that mom that had reached out to you about her son, and even your own uh, time when you had some depression when you were uh, playing, what are some things that when you find an athlete that's struggling, what are some of the reasons that, that you find those athletes are struggling? The number one thing is self-love. So how I, how I simplify this is like, our relationship with sport is like a relationship with a human being, right? So when you give love out, so you love your sport, you expect love back. Okay. So whether that's from acknowledgement, from performance, whether it's, you know, just someone showing up and, and cheering for you at a game or like do, making a great play, we want that love back. And so what happens is, you know, especially, especially as athletes, we're so set on the outcome. Like when I win, it'll feel good because everyone's happy and then I'll feel happy. Right. And, but so we always work outside in, like, I'm going to let this win dictate how I feel inside. But what I, what I always challenge, what I always push athletes to, to do is let's go inside out. Like what can you control in this moment? So one of the exercises I do is I get athletes to define their own definition of success. So we get like, you know, everybody gets so caught up in like, he's successful, he's successful, they're successful, but no one really has that like that um, simple answer for themselves. Um, and so I get them to flip it in, in, in a way where, you know, if you look at a football game, there's so many people on the field, there's coaches, there's athletes, there's fans, there's refs, there's so many variables. So if you base your self-worth off of an outcome that you can't control, you're setting yourself up for failure. But if you, f if you define your process that then process that then leads to success, you're going to be in a better place. And so it's like, how can we turn it into like, what can you control? And the big thing is, is that self-love because what we're always seeking is love. Like the answer for me for everything is love. So when we go out on the field, we love what we do, right? We want that love back, but it's like, how can we give it to ourselves so that when we, you know, say, okay, like I would, I always say like when you, um, you give yourself what you seek from others. So if you want that acknowledgement and appreciation, acknowledge and appreciate yourself. And that way, when someone actually does it for you, it's just confirmation of what you already know. And there's an, emp there's an empowering um, uh, state that you, you get into there because it's like, I, I don't rely on these other people to make me feel good inside. Because the, the reason why that's so important to me is, so say it's an athlete who really feels good when they win or when they accomplish something or when their bench press goes up, their bench press goes up or when they score touchdowns, when you go into life, what does that now look like? Like, do you have to get a promotion in order to feel good? Do you have to make a certain amount of money in order to feel good? I love to get athletes or guide athletes to set up their own frame of like, okay, I'm going to be happy regardless. As long as I X, Y, and Z, as long as I work hard, express myself and have fun, you know, it's, it's up to them, but it's, it's to simplify, like, because it, it is like a, it is an issue. A lot of people are so caught up in that outcome and it's, it's just something that I, I, like, I just, I want athletes to love themselves regardless. Yeah. It's, it's such a, yeah. it's such a cool concept of, of teaching them that. Cause I think, 
you know, something we have between athletes and then we have a lot of uh, even athletes who also um, were in the military that are that listen to this too, and I th- that listen to this too, and I think there's so much value to being a part of you know a group where the goals are above you. But the downside of that is a lot of times when whether it's coming you know being discharged from the military or being done with your athletic career, you don't know how to function outside of like yes. what do I do now that I don't have that higher goal of the team anymore. So it's like this double-edged sword of you know you have to have you have to be prepared because you can't continue to find your value in those things and i mean the one of the things that i've even done for with my uh, powerlifting athletes i work with is the people who get the most frustrated i think have not been able to sit down and clearly define like what do i have to do on a yearly monthly weekly daily basis to be happy and to, yes. to find value in what you're doing. And even with a big part of my job at OU is, is a mentorship of students. And the last couple of years I've been focusing more and focusing more and more on the first thing before we talk about any other job responsibilities and we sit down is like, what are your values? What, no matter where you go, no matter what job you have, no matter what you're doing, where you live, what do you need to be fulfilled? And then we just break it down from there. Because if you don't focus on that and you get caught up in like the exact nuts and bolts of everything you're doing that changes all the time yes. even for myself and my job it's like if i don't if i don't you know there's always work to be done and if i don't sit down and say here's what i need to accomplish to know that i'm that i'm being fulfilled then if i don't define that then like every day i'm going to leave frustrated because it's not all going to get done <laughs> you know absolutely yeah so it's I think it's great what you're doing with helping them to, to realize those things. And, you know, I think it's hard sometimes for athletes to think of a term like, you know, self-love, but it's like when you really break it down to what you're talking about, it's like that will help every aspect of their athletic career, their athletic career. Of course. And you said something too about, uh, you know, feeling frustrated, right? So it's like, you know, uh, what athletes tend to do is, um, they beat themselves up. So if they don't perform the way that they wanted, they beat themselves up. And if you really break it down, like, how do you want to feel? Do you want to feel beaten up or do you want to feel like elevated and empowered? And it's like helping them like basically um, revamp their entire thought process of, okay, as soon as something, you know, let's say quote unquote negative happens, okay, how do I want to treat myself in this situation? Because if you really ask someone, you get them to sit down, like, I don't want to feel like I don't want to beat myself up. But it's like a natural thing as an athlete because we're, we're constantly progressing. We're constantly growing. We're constantly being coached. So there's criticism. There's feedback. There's all this stuff. But it's like we control, we control what we filter in and out, right? And it's like that space right after the, making a mistake, that's the most mistake. That's the most important space. Do you fill yourself up with love or do you beat yourself up? Yeah, absolutely. You know? I think you see that even with when I've – when I've coached in the past or even some of the athletes that I know, it's like, it's easy to shrug off some of these things because it's not what, you know, quote unquote conventionally you think about with athletics, but the athletes that I've seen struggle the most are the ones that as soon as something goes wrong, they shut down because they can't yeah. handle it. And so it's like, if you have, it, it seems like sometimes athletes would be like, no, but like, I want my sport to be my number one priority because I care that much about my sport. I want to be the best that I can. But the danger of that is as soon as something doesn't go well in that sport, it's going to hurt you to the point where you can't continue to progress in your sport. So it's like I've found and I even, you know, I've had I have some close friends that have held world records in in powerlifting and other sports. And it's like they told me and I found the same with myself that the more they could loosen their loosen their grip on what they were trying to be good at, the better they got at it. It seems so counterintuitive, but it's so true because then you can. You know, it's great to be, and we see it a lot in in strength sports, you know, people are very emotionally attached to competing because it's a, you know, it's a a type of therapy for them. But I tell people, you got to be careful with that because it's like you get too emotionally wound into it and it's actually going to hurt you, you know, and I think so the things you're talking about just are so good because then it allows somebody to have a bump in the road and to step back reevaluate and then jump back into it without it totally decimating their entire identity. <laughs> yes. And, and, and that's the, that's the key is having, what I always say is like, you have that, you want to create that foundation. So when the storm comes, you're going to be okay. Because if you don't have the foundation of who you are, 
as soon as the storm comes, you're going right with the storm. And oh. like, that's, that's so like, it happens so many times. And like you were talking about, like you were talking about the conversations you have where people are like, Oh yeah, I struggled with that as well. The amount of athletes that come up to me being like, when I was done playing, I had no idea, no idea. And that's the foundation. And that's why, like when I work with like a, a teenager and they define their identity, it just, it gives me chills because it's like, now they know who they are. They're always that person, no matter what, you know, like there's no, like there, there's nothing that's going to, that's going to control them. Like I always say, once you, when you stand for something, you won't fall for anything. Right. And that's what I look at this whole program as is when you define all these things for yourself, you're not going to be controlled by all the other things out there. And you're getting me fired up, man. This is awesome. I'm talking with my hands and everything. <laughs> I'm, the same, I'm the same way, man. This, like this, sometimes I, I was like, I've done some of these over video before, and I've like switched to audio because I'm like, I get too distracted. <laughs> <'Cause> I'm, just, <laughs> I'm the same way. I'm Italian. I talk with my hands too. But the uh, so I know this too. But the uh, awesome. um, no, I think I think it's just so so good, man. And I think. You know, I know there's probably a lot of people listening. I've even, you know, gotten criticism from people that are like, oh, this stuff is just, you know, so whatever. You know, it's it's hard for an athlete who's been so used to a certain line of thinking to to look at it a different way. And, you know, some of the toughest guys that I know have started thinking about things this way, and it's helped every part of their life, and it's made them tougher. It's not made them weaker by yeah. trying to figure out how to navigate some of these things. Um you know, being an emotionless athlete who just pretends everything's okay all the time and just, like you said, travels with, it's essentially like a, you know, tree in the wind getting blown with a storm. It's like, that's, it's not going to help you in your life. It's also not going to help you in your athletic career. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned a few components of what you do with, you know, your, your 12 week, 12 week program, a few of the things you've worked with, with goal setting with your athletes. I've seen you do some, um, some things with groups of teams too, um, mm -hmm. before what is, what does that look like when you meet with a team? Um, and what do you kind of talk with them as a group about and maybe some of the things you do with them? Yeah. So uh, all, for example, last week I met with, um, the Wilfrid Laurier university football team. It's where I played, um, back here in Waterloo. And, uh, so what I did was we, we, I got them. So basically, you know, I introduced myself. I, I'll, I'll, t I'll talk about the importance of what I do. And just kind of give them like an intro because it is very unique, right? And it needs to you need to open the perspective up a little bit. And then um, what I do is I do an exercise because I always like if I speak for an hour, it's awesome. They'll feel good. And then the next day, then what? Right? right. Like it, so I always want them to take stuff home. So everybody who ever comes into my session always gets a piece of paper and a pen. So or if they'll, or if they have their notebook, whatever. So what I got what I got these guys to do. So they define their identity and then they define their own definition of success. And so through that process, you know, I, I go through, I, I prompt them with questions. Um, I have my own methods for each exercise. Um, but it, it, I think the most important part to these team exercises is the sharing. Like when guys stand up and they're like, yeah, I struggle with this and I believe that I'm this and I'm a source of this for my teammates and I stand for this word. You know, like that stuff, it's awesome because it breaks down barriers on the team. And, you know, I play some instrumental rap music. I find it gets guys engaged, but they're not distracted by the words. Right. Um, and so that, that's, that, that's worked really well as well. And, you know, I have the slides up so they can, you know, if they ever have want to go back to the questions, the questions are up on the board. Um, but it's a very fluid process of just kind of getting them to think about themselves. Like I said, selves, like I said, that. You know, just giving that time and space. Um, and then, yeah, the sharing is a big one. Uh, coaching them through get, getting, like I said, creating the, answering the big question, throwing all the answers down and then simplifying it so that it's like you have it all bottled up into one. Um, and so getting guys to share, open up. Um, and then afterwards, it's awesome. The Q&A is the best because it's just like, what do you guys want to know? Like, I'm just use me as a resource because I – and I love telling young athletes this is like, I created this because I wish I had it when I was their age. Right. And so it's like all of these lessons, I just want to teach them. Like, I just want to like, I just want to get it out. So it was awesome at the end because they, you know, they, they open up. They're just like, okay, I, I struggle with this. Like, this is what my motivation is. Awesome. 
and you just kind of guide them through. Like, I don't tell them anything. It's not like you're lacking self love. You need to love yourself. It's like, you know, what, what do you want? Like, what do you, how do you want to feel? And, um, and, um, I know that we, we talked about in this session last week, we talked about the power of language and I noticed in coaching, this happens a lot. Um, we limit people with our language. So you'll hear foot one coach goes, you're slow. Okay. So you limit that athlete to a box of like, you're slow and you're only slow. Whereas if you say you can be faster, it's now opened up and there's possibility. So, and I, I say like when, when this one uh, athlete was like, you know, I'm a bad student. I'm like, okay. So when you say you're a bad student, what's going to happen? <laughs> it's like, I'm going to be a bad student. So I was like, okay, so what can you say to yourself? And like, you know, some people are like, I'm not going to say that I'm a good student. I'm like, that's fine. But how could you open it up for possibility? Can you be a better student? You know, and then it kind of opens up. It's like, wow, yes, I could be a better student. And so that, that was a, a trend of, of our conversation um, last week. Um, yeah, la- uh, yesterday I worked with the Brock, with the Brock University women's basketball team. They were awesome. It was a smaller group, so it was a little more intimate, which was really cool. Um, they opened up and it, it was great. I love those team sessions. Yeah, that's awesome. awesome. And I think yeah. the, um, to your point about the things people are saying and limiting yourself in your language, I think there's so many parallels between just like, you know, just generally, like even the things I've been working with people with, with mental health, it's like, you know, I, you don't need to be just like delusionally positive. That's not what I think yeah. anybody's asking anyone to do. You know, we want people to be realistic, but there's a lot of weight that people don't realize in the things that they say. And I've tried to, and I've made mistakes with it for myself in the past, but now it's like, I've, I've people that'll message me or email me sometimes and they'll say like, you know, something like, it's one thing to say, you know, I'm struggling with this, or this is something that I'm hurt by or whatever. But sometimes, you know, they'll right away jump into, it's always going to, it's always going to be like this. This is who I am, blah, blah. I'm like, well, yeah, it's going to be as long as you keep saying that. Because if, if you keep self-fulfilling your own prophecy of, of those things being negative, then like yes. every time you say that, you know, and, it, and you can even break it down to a, to a very concrete neurological sense. Like you're just ingraining those pathways in your brain that that's going to be true. Right. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I, that's why I try to encourage people. I'm like, every time you say that you are one step closer to that statement being true. And it's like, and, and like you said, it's not that you can't say I could be better. This is something I'm struggling with, but I really try to encourage people. I'm like, you gotta watch when you are just declaring what your future is when it's negative like that, because that's, and a lot of times, you know, I'm sure as you see, that's from how they've been talked to themselves in the past, whether it's from family members or coaches or significant others or whatever. Um, but yeah, I think, I think that's a great point you make about helping people understand like there's, you know, it's not anything like magical, but it's like, there's, there's a lot of importance you have to place on understanding how you say things, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so for, Athletes, um, at the end here, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about how people can get more information about what you do if they want to reach out to you about um, having you come speak to their team or even doing, or even doing uh, individual coaching, things like that. But for just kind of generally, you know, you've already touched on quite a few things, but um, for athletes that are, you know, if there's somebody listening to this or even a coach that's listening to this and it's like they see they got, they have athletes that, you know, they're competing, but they notice like, these are probably some things that they're struggling with. What are a couple like simple things that you would recommend to, you know, obviously everyone's different, but like to an athlete to be like, Hey, just start thinking about these things, um, in ways that'll help them to kind of expand their horizons a little bit outside of what maybe the typical athlete is kind of ingrained in kind of knows to the grindstone right now. For sure. The, the number one thing is journaling. And it's so funny when I, when I talk about this, cause it's like, just journal, like just start writing, you know, there's a power to writing things down and seeing it on paper, like seeing your thoughts on paper and you know, whether like a lot of people, talk, whether like a lot of people talk about gratitude, that's great. You know, reflection, especially as an athlete, like I did this, this was the reaction, you know, why did it bring this out in me? Like just getting that out on paper is so important. And but I think the, the the foundation of everything is who are you? Like, ask yourself, if I took away everything that I, I love doing right now, who am I? 
Like, what am I left with? And the, the big question is like, you know, who are you for your teammates? Who are you for yourself? Who are you for your family? And it's always inside out. It's not like, okay, John thinks I'm funny. It's like, no, do you think you're funny? Like, who are you inside and what do you stand for? And I think that's, it's just something great to reflect on. Like there's, you know, you don't have to go through a session with me. It's just, a, it's just a question to reflect on of like, you know, if this was taken away from me, because at some, this is the thing with athletes is at some point it's going to be taken away. Yeah. So, yeah. so who are you when, when you're injured? Like, who are you when you're, you know, when you're, when everything you want is gone, right? It's like, it's, it's, it's a crazy thought, but it's just, it's just that reflection because to me, I believe the, like, I know I said the answer is love, but the self-awareness of our behavior is like, that's the first step to it all. Because once you know that you're like, okay, you know what? I don't like feeling crappy after I, you know, do a hundred pushups. Okay. I'm going to change my routine. But like, for me, I think of it, like I used to do so many pushups and my, my chest would cave in and I would just be so closed off. And I'd be tight and I just wouldn't feel good, but I didn't realize what I was doing. But as right. soon as I, you know, as soon as you like start to open up and like, I'm doing yoga or whatever, I'm like, okay, this feels better. Why does this feel better? So it's just that constant reflection of, you know, what are you doing? How do you feel? You know, and, uh, you touched on values and the thing, and the thing I love about values is, you know, like we talked about, it's the constant throughout our whole life. But what I like to push people on is, so you have your values, say it's happiness, okay? The next, the next step of that to gain clarity on is like, okay, what does happiness come in the form of? So say it's gratitude. Then you ask yourself, what does this look like at the surface? So in the day to day. So maybe gratitude is like sending a random text to a friend once a day. So it's like, how do you implement those values in your day to day? So it's like, say love is important to you. What does love come in the form of? Maybe it's physical touch. Okay. I love to hug strangers. Awesome. I'm going to do that twice a day. You know, it's like, it's, it's really getting clear on how am I implementing my values in my day to day? Because we, again, we talk about the outcome. A lot of athletes are like, well, when I go to the CFL, when I go to the NFL, this is going to happen. It's like, no, all of those things that you want, you can have it right now. It's just going to look different. Good man. Right. So I, gaining clarity on those things, I know I'm talking fast. I'm fired up right now. But No, it's, it's uh, good, man. It's, but it's that, really valuable stuff. That clarity is so key because, you know, those values, like, like you said, they're not, they're, they're, you know, some may shift here and there, but the, the core of them will stay the same. And like I said, it just, it just looks different. But yeah, the, key, the, key, the key is reflection. I mean, that's, that's what changed my life. Like just reflecting, like thinking about myself rather than thinking about, what I am for other people. Like that's, it's huge. Yeah, definitely. And, and, you know, like you said, you learn a lot about yourself when you start to write those things down. I mean, that's I've done some journaling in the past and it's like, that's one of the quickest ways to realize when you have really, you know, just BS thinking in your head that you are thinking all the time. And sometimes you don't realize it until you sit and write it down and you're like, you like read that statement out loud to somebody and you're like, man, that's kind of messed up. Like, yeah. why do I, like, I, like I've really been thinking that and, uh, and I've been believing that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. it trickles into everything, you know, people do. And, you know, to your point too, about defining what's going to make you happy. Um, you know, I, I saw a great presentation from Sean Acor who t- uh, wrote a book called the happiness advantage at a conference I was at. And, um, and he talked about like this idea of, of starting dig deeper. You know, a lot of times, I think people, when they think of happiness, they're attaching it to a very superficial thing, something that's very up and down that can be taken away at any moment. And if you can kind of dig a little deeper and attach your happiness or, you know, joy to things that are deeper than that, that can kind of hold their roots through your entire life outside of just whether you're a healthy athlete performing well, or just if you're in a good relationship or just if your work's going great, like if you can dig your stuff a little deeper than that, then you know, it's not to say that you're not still going to be frustrated when things aren't going good, but aren't going good. But you can, you can get back. You can pick yourself up quicker. And I think you probably see that too with athletes that get injured. It's like this isn't just about like post career. This is like you know, if you, you know, they they've done research with athletes. It's like if you get injured and then you fall apart emotionally, your road to getting back on the field is going to be a lot longer versus if you can take a deep breath and go, okay, let's just. 
let's step back let's look at the plan let's move forward yeah you know so it's yeah i think that's all just incredibly valuable stuff and i and i hope that athletes can can you know if, if nothing else can look at some of those things you mentioned and start like asking some questions and if the questions make you uncomfortable that probably means that's a road there's something there on. exactly yeah. yes yes yeah, absolutely um so i think you know this is obviously kind of just a we kind of went very surface on some of these things but i think you know to some of your points it's it's something where you ask those questions you start to questions you start to see where that leads you and then you can go a lot deeper um, if athletes are interested in or coaches are interested in more of what you do and uh, whether it's coming and have you come speak to their team or do coaching or just getting resources, um, where can they find more of that information with what you do, Vince? Absolutely. So my website is thelegacycoaching.com. Uh, my Instagram is at thelegacycoaching and Twitter is legacy underscore coaching too many characters in the legacy coaching. Yeah. Um, and then my email is Vince at the legacy com. Great. And I, I highly recommend it people to, to follow you on some of the things that you're putting content on. It's been really good for me um, just to even see what you're doing. Cause it's a good reminder to me about that stuff. And I think, I think what you're doing is a big important piece of the puzzle to people, not only performing the best they can, um, which is a why a big a why a big reason I think coaches should take it very seriously. But also, you know, like we talked about, your entire life, you know, how much how much value are you and fulfillment are you getting out of it? So, yes. um, I highly recommend people to check that out. And uh, you know, maybe in the future we can discuss a little more deeper on some of these topics. But I think these are some good questions to get people to start thinking, maybe outside of where they've currently been. Absolutely. So, well, thank you for chatting today, Vince. I really appreciate it. And, um, yeah, this was good. It's even good thought provoking things and good reminders for me, uh, as I move forward with what I'm doing. So, so thank you. That's awesome. I'm glad. I really appreciate you, you having me on. It means Absolutely. a lot. Absolutely.